Well, hoi, you mateys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm the captain of the division, and this is my Let's Play channel. If you guys are new here, hit that like button and subscribe. And right now, we're going to read a little bit of the lore and background of Vedan, the Demise, from AFK Arenas, a game that I stream um, daily, if not, maybe uh, two to three times a week. So make sure you guys hit that like button and notification button. Let's get started. So there's a picture of a Dan. If you're not sure which character it is, it's all the way at the bottom left of the screen. Uh, pretty cool guy. I, I like playing as him. All right, let's get into the story. The people of Ranhorn were disappearing. When the sun set, those fortunate enough to live behind strong doors would scurry back to their dwellings, drawing bolts and latches. They would shutter their windows and sit together around the warmth of their fires, listening for any strange noises outside. For those without the comforts of hearth and home, the night was dark indeed. The street folk stole worried glances at the moonlight, squeezing into a cloves or behind barrels for a meager usification they could provide. A cloud of mistrust and ill feelings settled over the townspeople, and they turned away any vagrants begging sanctuary with decisive, stern refusals. The street folk and travelers too poor to afford, afford lodging at an inn would be found days later, dropped carelessly in some alley or back lot, their corpses desiccated, their skin like old parchment. Count Vidan was the last person anyone would ever suspect. A noble of st staggering wealth and privilege. What motiva motivation, motivation, whoops, <laughs> what motivation could he possess? He never wanted for anything. His life, one of such luxury that the average man could hardly imagine it. One thing could not be bought, however. He was very aware that the great equalizer, death, cared no more for his wealth than it did others' poverty. The concept of death, death one day coming for him was insulting, and he began to dwell into the dark arts with indigent intensity, seeking to escape the inevitable. With time, efforts, threats, and a great deal of money, he accumulated a small library of forbidden knowledge. His shelf and dusty tomes and blood-stained scrolls contain such damning information. That to be found with it would mean a burning at the stake, no matter his sta station or influence. It was after absorbing this knowledge that he saw the two orphan girls. His intuition told him that they would be useful, and he always trusted his intuition. He took them, Silvana and Isabella, back to his manor. After gaining their trust with smiles, gifts, and warm meals, he brought them to the library, instructing them to take down the old volumes and read them aloud. His smile took a manacle twist. He listened intently as the younger girl muttered over the ancient words as smoothly, smoothly as if she had read the passage a hundred times before. The room darkened, the candles guttering, and disembodied whispers danced around the trio. This girl had a gift he could use. Under Vedan's tutelage, Isabella developed the ritual that would allow Vedan to live as long as there were unsuspecting food sources. The blood of the townsfolk would become the life force of another superior being. The older one would serve a more brutal purpose. It was difficult to recognize her strength and callousness. She could accomplish great things with a blade and some training. The sprawling manor Vedan had occupied began to take on the look of an empty home, ceasing to exhibit the entangable energy of life within. By the time anyone decided to investigate, the state had been long abandoned. The only residents now are the thousands of bats that occasionally swarm in to the dusk over Ranhorn, always an omen of another disappearance. Death is for the poor. If you guys enjoyed that, leave a comment of whose story you would like me to read next. 
and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and comment. Bye guys.